Hey, everybody. Boy, I better get my microphone in there, huh? Boom. All right. There we go. Man, I'm glad to see you all tonight be with you. Praise the Lord. Man, let me grab one of these right fast. Kill off the agua. All right. Praise the Lord. I am so thankful to be here with you tonight. Man, we're counting up the days, counting down the days. I love it. I love y'all. I love your uh, faithfulness, your zeal for the Lord, and your humility, man. You can't be saved without being humble, right? Uh, what is repentance? Repentance is turning away from the way you believed to the way God believes. That requires humility for a man to submit himself under the authority of God, the Word of God, and to say, okay, what was your side of the story, Lord? And he tells it. The only way you're going to go to heaven, he says, is through the death, burial, and resurrection of my only begotten son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He left here. The angels missed him for 33 and a half years. He's the darling of heaven, and he left heaven. And boy, those angels were without him for 33 and a half years. And then he died for you. And he was buried for three days, and then he rose again after three days so you could be saved, so you can come to heaven and join he and the angels in holy song, in worship, in hallelujah chorus. Amen? Now, yeah. will you believe that? Will you believe that? And that's what the requirement of going to heaven is, believing God's side of the story, which is his Bible. God's side of the story is his Bible and his Bible code. The Bible code, we talk about that here. We'll, by God's grace, cover a couple Bible codes tonight. And that is, God is so awesome, he has his word within his word. And it's coded in the original text. The text, Old Testament Hebrew, New Testament Aramaic. And God has encoded wonderful, wonderful messages in there for today. For something that only today's generation would understand, would know. The names, the people. And it's awesome, man. And at this very same time, you're in the middle of the biggest ritual ever. Everything's going on right now, man. March Madness, WWE. Um, let's see here. The women's game tomorrow, the final, the women's NCAA Final Four Championship is tomorrow. And Barack Obama's team lost yesterday. He was going for the, the Lady Gamecocks of South Carolina. And they were on a roll. That they were to go 36-0. and 0. Matter of fact, they had won 20 games before that last year. So it was on like a 54, 55-game roll. And then they went up and straight up lost yesterday. And dang. So both the teams he chose for the men's tournament and for the women's tournament, you know, they both lost. Let's see who's playing tomorrow. LSU Tigers. The Eye of the Tiger. The Beast from the East. Jesus is the Lion and he is the Tiger. This is according to the occult purposes. This is according to uh, Chinese. This is according to a the Asians, actually. According to the Mid-Easterners. They're looking for the one who's the Tiger. The Eye of the Tiger. And all they in the occult know about it. And Christians are stupid. And they're just cheering this on. And they can't wait for their team to play. And who are the Tigers playing? The Hawkeyes. You know, the Falcon Eyes? Horus? The Freemasons that, that eyeball in your dollar bill? That's who's playing tomorrow for the championship. They're the ones that beat the Lady Gamecocks. Threw them right off their throne, off their pedestal. Oh my goodness. You're in the middle of a ritual, and both these mascots are honoring devils and demons, the tiger devil and the hawkeye devil, and they're the same devil on the same beast, Barack Obama. Right now, the, the men are playing the first of the final four games, and when I last looked, uh, Florida Atlantic is up by two. So the seaport town is losing right now by two points. And tomorrow, another seaport, or, or later tonight, at, at about 7.50, the other seaport town will be playing. And the other two teams, which aren't sea 
port, when I say seaport, I'm talking about naval seaports, Connecticut and San Diego. San Diego is losing by two points right now. And the other two teams are right there by each other, Miami and Boca Raton, right there in Florida, on the East Coast in Florida. Ritual, 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 ritual. And tomorrow night is going to be, there's two nights of the World Wrestle Entertainment, you know, WWE. Two nights of it. Tonight's a big night, and it's in Los Angeles, California. This is WrestleMania 39, which is 13 times 3, Triple Rebellion. And they're playing in Los Angeles, California, where they haven't played in 18 years. 666. Ritual, ritual, ritual. And tomorrow night, the they're going to have Hell in a Cell. That's a, that's a cage match. The big cage is set up, and boom, it's Hell in a Cell. And the guys fighting each other are Edge and the Demon Finn Balor. So we got a demon fighting Hell in a Cell tomorrow night. Just before the big, the big match. With the American Nightmare fighting Rome Reigns, Roman Reigns, the United Nations versus America. We'll see who wins that one. You're in the middle of a ritual, folks. All of this. Everybody paying attention and throwing in their suspended belief. They really believe this stuff is real. There's adult men who still believe wrestling is real. There's adult men who still think basketball, college basketball is real. Did you know that? They're both just as fake as the other. Do you know why they give us WrestleMania? Do you know why there is pro wrestling? Because they make that fakery so crazy and obvious that you don't know everything else around you is fakery. Mm -hmm. They portray like it's real, man. And some of the players in the middle of that think it's real. While the demons are doing their thing, the demon leaders, the demon coaches, and the demon players are doing their thing. Amen. Praise God. Sean has been given another code. He's produced us another code concerning his prophetic mother. Guys, 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 guys. If you only knew what we knew concerning this woman, woman of God, her numbers line up. She is a sign, a final sign. You know, the enemy, they're always looking for their final sign. Dio was singing about it. You know, two eyes from the east, it's the angel or the beast. And they're all looking for their signs. The final sign. When the misty morning rolls away to die. We've been having a lot of misty mornings right here. Right? Cannibal Corpse, Morbid Angel. They were in the concert last night at the Apollo Theater, guys. I want you to note that. Apollo is Apollyon, the Destroyer. And at the Destroyer's Theater up there in the outside of Chicago, Belvedere, Illinois, a tornado hit them, and at least one was killed, dozens injured, while Morbid Angel. Now, Morbid Angel is Apollyon, the Destroyer. And they sing about anti-God things, hail Satan. They throw the, up the horns, and they holler that out. You can just go look at one of their live shows. You can't understand a word they're saying. Crazy. What else do we have here? We have, oh, by the way, Taylor Swift's new video. She swims under the star. A tsunami comes. Oh, imagine that. It says, you got to see Taylor Swift video. It's insanely clear what they're up to. And it's, guys, and what do people do? Oh, they talk about it. This is so great. This is your best work. Oh, this is awesome. And they are giving power to demon power, to the demons. That's what ritual is. Ritual is... Uh... <laughs> oh, man, guys. Everything is a ritual. It's giving rise to the beast. You know that people are already, Christians, are already celebrating with bunnies and, and eggs, right? Doing events. Churches are already doing events. They'll be doing a big event next Sunday as well. Guys, tomorrow, on their calendar, what they suppose, they all suppose that it is Resurrection Weekend next week. 
okay? So tomorrow will be the day that Jesus rode in on the donkey on their calendar. Now, that's not true. We know better than that. He doesn't even ride in on the calendar or on the donkey on the AD 30 calendar just yet. They're a week off there, okay? And this year, it's not until May. May 18th is the day Jesus dies on our calendar this year, okay? And he raises from the dead on Sunday the 21st. Hallelujah. That's what heaven knows. That's what heaven... Wouldn't you want to be celebrating at the same time God in heaven is? Be in unison, be in one accord, in one unified spirit, the Holy Spirit who's led us in all truth. I will send you the comforter and he shall guide you in all truth. So what's going on with these people that hate the truth we're sharing with them? What's that about? The Holy Spirit's not their guide. They may be saved, but they're letting their feelings, their emotions, their desires, their lusts be their desires, be their guide. I pray that everybody listening to my voice right now, that you'll stop and drop and pray real quick in tremendous humility, in sackcloth and ash type thing, and say, Lord, Father, in the name of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, I only want to live holy and be led by your Holy Spirit. Please, please may this be true. May it be my heart's desire. May it be what you see and know and understand from heaven, Lord. Please let that be your prayer. Shut your TV off. Get rid of your Netflix. Put about 15 shotgun shells through your TVs, each one. Take them all out in the woods with your kids. Have a blast. Have a ball. And watch them blow the idols away, the altars. Every TV is an altar, guys. Bringing in the word of the devil. Fulfilling your flesh. Uh, get, letting you relax. Give you a little me time. Me time is Satan time. You don't get me time. It's all God's time. And you're called and commanded to redeem the time. Amen. Amen. So yeah, all this stuff was going on last night. Little Rock, Arkansas was destroyed. That's just uh, two hours down the street from me here. And then coming up, Wynn, Arkansas was an hour down the street from me, and they had two die there in that tornado. And then we were praying against it, and it, the tornado just fizzled out. We praise God. And then we have the tornado moving on in Mississippi, and we have this wind ripping this roof off while Morbid Angel is playing at the Apollo Theater. You got to love that. The devil of destruction's coming. And these fools sing about the end of the world coming. The end of the world is coming. And I've never felt so alive. They love it. They want it. They desire it. Because they have believed the lie. You and I, uh, we're looking for Jesus Christ to come and save the day. Because it's his day, the day of the Lord. And the saved will be saved in that day. Hallelujah. Aren't you thankful you're saved? Do you know that you're saved? Have you really placed your faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ? Do you believe in him and him alone and nothing else? Not your enduring to the end, not your baptism, your water baptism, not your anything, your, in, your, your faithfulness. Watch me, Lord. Watch how faithful I am. That gets nobody to heaven. That gets nobody saved. Only humility and humbling yourself to the mind of God and his word. That's what repentance is. We just said that. Getting in line with God. Getting in line with God and being saved his way. Belief, belief only. Amen. Now we're in the middle of all these rituals and there's so many others that I didn't even mention. These, these are the big ones. Americanized because... I'm an American. I live in America. I know American news, and it starts in America. God's going to blow us off the map first before there even is a tribulation. Okay? So it's pretty important what happens to America. Everybody's keep your eyes on Jerusalem. Keep your, keep your eyes on America, folks. Okay? There's a bunch of Jews here, and then it's going to end up in Jerusalem. Then keep your eyes on Jerusalem. America goes down first, and the people in Jerusalem think they got it made in the shade. They're fine. Whoo! Oh, Obama's our leader? Let's follow him. Deception. 
And then he double crosses them. And then we see what happens. All right. All right, guys. Sean has laid out the mana two hours ago. Fresh mana from heaven just hit the ground two hours ago. And he says, this is concerning his mama, Levite. Now, his mother is from the tribe of Levi, and his father is from the tribe of Levi. His mother was a godly woman. His father is Antichrist. His father opposes God right now. And that's what we looked at last night. Sean's going to have the privilege to come back and talk to him after he's already been to heaven. And so Vondo has just put up this link. Levite, Linda Mitchell, that's the mother side of the Levitical priesthood. And then, and should, see, that, that means nothing to us now. But it means an awful lot to God, and it means a lot to us because we're people of faith, and we know where this is going. We know that uh, where it has been for the last seven, eight years, the Levite, Sean Mitchell, he, he is the product of Linda Mitchell, her offspring, her son. And God has used that Levite to get us these Bible codes, this fresh manna from heaven. So it means a lot to us, okay? Not for our salvations, the Levitical priesthood, but it will mean a lot to the people, the Jews, in the tribulation. And these codes, the Bible, the Word of God, Jesus, Yeshua, He means everything to us. So we love these codes and we love the work of Sean Mitchell, the Levite, who's an offspring of Linda Mitchell, the Levite. Moses, offspring. God is telling that to us. Do you believe the Bible? Do you believe the Bible when it says in the beginning, God, and it's his Bible? In the beginning, God created, and then God said, that's how he created. First thing he created, it was something he said, let there be light. It's his word that is so powerful. We believe Genesis. We believe Revelation. Now, most of you egg-worshipping Bunny worshiping folks, you have no clue what Revelation is all about. You don't even know it. You don't understand. You don't know the 17 prophets. Okay? You don't know the Bible. You, you don't fear God. You don't fear His Word. You're like the people who came back in uh, Second Kings. I think it was Second Kings around 17. When they came back to Samaria. And they were just... Samaria had infiltrated and just shoved up all their people, all the idol worshiping people in the land and uh, overran it with the other gods. Because Samaria, Ephraim, had turned from God, turned from Jehovah, and so he let them go captive. He let the Assyrians come in and take them out. And then they shoved the land filled with their people, false god worshiping folks. Okay, And then, all of a sudden, God sent lions out to destroy the people. And they're like, whoa, stop, stop, stop. We need somebody to teach us the ways of the God of this land because we haven't feared him. And these lions, he sent these lions to destroy us. We need to fear him. And so they sent somebody from Samaria who didn't even know him, who was an idol worshiper himself to teach them the ways of God, the little bits that he knew, you know, like pastors in the pulpits today. Here's kind of what I know about God. I learned this at seminary years ago, but I don't read my Bible daily, especially not 10 to 20 chapters every day. I don't have time for that. Don't you know it's Final Four and then WWE's tomorrow night? Hmm? Don't you know that it starts tonight and ends tomorrow night? When I get home from church, I'm going to have T-voted it, and I'll be watching that. I've pay-per-viewed it, says the preacher, because I want my kids growing up in this filth. In this nakedness, this rated R. You guys know the Edge. His his name was Rated R. Razor Ramon, the, you know, all those guys. They're they're all X-rated, R-rated, demonic. And then you pastors pay pay-per-view to have your kids watch it. Cheryl has put up the uh reference. It is 2 Kings 17. And they brought in all these uh these people, and God sent lions among them, and they said, man, we need to learn the way of the lions, of, of the God here, the, you know, who, uh, what up? And they brought a guy in to train them. And what does the Bible go on to say down there around 32, 33, 34? It says, they feared God, 
And we know it's because of the lions. They, they, they had a little reverence for the local God, but it says, and they really feared, it's a different word, all the other gods. They worship them. They, they fear, and that's what, that's what the American church is, guys. They, they fear God. They, they fear God of heaven, the creator. They, they believe, especially here in the Bible Belt, that God created and the Bible's his word, but they really fear and love the other gods more. He, he gets 30 minutes on Sunday. Now, it's a task getting all the kids ready and everything. That's, that's part of our sacrifice. To go to church, we have to get all these kids dressed up and we have to fight them and have to calm them down. We have to stop the fights just before we get to church. And then we go into church and we get in the lobby and we don't talk about Jesus. We talk about last night's game and last night's WWE. That's what we do. We talk about who's who and who did what. And we also talk about the local sports teams, the baseball team. Oh, and that tornado. Oh, those poor people. And some people don't even care about the poor people that got killed and hurt. Don't even care about it. And that's why God's mad at the United States of America. Our attitude is, hey, as long as it didn't happen to me, boo, it didn't happen. Woo! All right, let's go have some fun. And God's about done with that. You know, he's going to take away that dollar. And the surprise element of that whole thing is we don't know when. We don't know when it's going to show its effects here in the United States. But those of us by faith know it's a coming, and we trust in the living God to take care of our needs. We have this far. I've not trusted in the dollar bill to get me this far. I've trusted in the Lord, and up to this point, they, they've used dollar bills to you know for trading, for what they call money, a currency. And they're, they're going to find out that it's not current any longer. Expiration date, baby. And so we, we know that's happening. We're in the middle of all that, the takedown of the United States of America. We also know that the Lord's going to take us up just before they take down America. Don't you love that? Don't you love our God and his wonderful plan, the love for his bride? Because there's a bunch of us here who fear him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And there's most of us here who don't fear him with all our heart. We fear him because of the lions and the, and the tornadoes. And we fear him because, you know, all that. But we fear the other gods more. Well, that's where we spend our time and our lives and our love and our hearts. And God's had enough. And there's going to be a lot of folks like that who have placed their faith in Jesus Christ and have done nothing else with their lives. And that's where the shame is going to come in at the judgment seat of Christ. Aren't you thankful for a Levite by the name of Sean Mitchell who's done the task of the Lord quietly for years with he and his mom alone in an apartment until the Lord was ready for her to move on and took her to her final places. She, she was in two different places before she went on to be with the Lord. And Sean's there by himself. Aren't you thankful for a guy who dedicates himself to the Lord? and serves him fully, and finds his greatest joys in the presence of the Lord, and in finding God's little smiles in the numbers, and in the words, the lyrics of God's songs in his songbook here. Aren't you thankful for that Levite? You need to be thankful for his mama. She was a Levite. Linda Mitchell, praise God. Cheryl says, good riddance, America. See ya. The America, spelled with a K, is the land of the plumed serpent. We are a satanic nation and always have been. And if you go to church next week, tomorrow, if you go to church tomorrow, tomorrow is supposed to be the day where we inspect the lamb to make sure it's perfect for the sacrifice. And that's what happened when Jesus rode in on that donkey. It was his inspection. And everybody approved the inspection. Hey, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, man. Woo, this is he. And a week later, he was raised from the dead after they killed him. The same bunch. The same fickle church crowd that we got today. Oh, you're just the greatest preacher. You preach the greatest sermons. Oh, you're awesome. And then quit. Same bunch. All right, let's look at this Bible code. And so Jesus passed the inspection, amen? D does he pass your inspection? Is he, is he the sacrifice for you, the only one? Going to believe in his death, burial, and resurrection? And people are going to go to church tomorrow, and he will take way back seat if he's there at all. 
and they'll go to church next week, and they're going to include bunny rabbits and eggs. And we're telling you right now, we are warning you, if you include bunny rabbits and eggs in your church service, you absolutely negate Jesus. The Jesus of Nazareth has nothing to do with you in that church service. And you are in the middle of it full-blown paganism. You're a pagan if you have eggs and bunny rabbits mixed with Jesus. Because he said, I'll have nothing else like that mixed with me. Now, you guys know eggs and bunny rabbits are the gods of pagans, right? They worship them. They love. They love the bunny rabbit. They love eggs. They love the phallic symbol and the vagina. They love it. And you do too if you have that in your church. And Jesus hates it. And I'm going to encourage you to have nothing to do with it. And don't you dare. If your church, if you feel that the Lord's leading me to stay at this church and they have eggs and they worship Easter every year and they have Christmas trees and Christmas, but the Lord's keeping me there, I'm going to encourage you not to go on these next two Sundays if they're going to be involving that. Because God will not be there. Okay? They can have a show of force. But in works, they deny him. Empty works, dead works. God calls us away from that. Saw a dude in a bunny costume at church today. I was livid. Yeah, I saw that too. I saw a guy hugging a bunny rabbit, and he said, yep, I know him personally. Something like that, to that effect. Aren't we supposed to know the Lord Jesus personally? Get to know him better and better and better all the time? That's a God he was hugging, guys. I don't want to know him. You, you, you keep him. Do you guys remember Donnie Darko and the whole thing with the rabbit? Do you remember all that? Do you, do you know that there's a movie out coming out right now called the, or, or a show called The Rabbit Hole with the dude from 24? Guys, satanic ritual to have nothing to do with it. All right. Sean Mitchell, Levite, Linda Mitchell, praise God, on a skip of, let's look at that, because this skip number is vital, uh, 32,150. Praise God, man. 32,150. And negative. That means it's going from the bottom up. Amen? That's what that means. Uh, found in Second Chronicles, all the way to Malachi, Malachi. All right. Guys, do you guys see that right there where it says Malachi, Malachi 3.16? You know what that verse says? It says, and they that feared the Lord only, feared him, and I mean feared him enough to flush all the others. And they that feared the Lord spoke often one to another in the foyer before church started about the Lord. And the Lord hearkened. Wow, this is different. And he called in for the book man and the pen. And a book of remembrance was called in. And the angel was commanded to write down every time these people who fear me speak about me. Because he's going to reward you. And they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened, and he called for a book of remembrance, and a book of remembrance was written, and it was entered into that book of remembrance. The things that they did, those who feared the Lord, did for him and spoke of him. And at the judgment seat of Christ, the books were opened. And God's going to judge you accordingly. That's where Miss Linda's verse ends. It begins in Second Chronicles 28 and ends in Malachi 3.16. Hallelujah. Let's see. Sean says this. This is his commentary. The Lord led me to do this code on March 5th, 2023. That was 17 days before my mother's death. The Bible number 17 means victory. The ELS 32150 contains the day she died. 321, March 21st. And 50 to me, you'll see that five zero is a zero. So five is grace, but 50 is Pentecost. 50 is Jubilee. I love that. Three, two, one, Jubilee. Countdown to the rapture. 
That's what I believe Miss Linda's life was about. And it was about much more than that, but it, her life here in that frail body ended with that. Y'all, I'm going to go see Jesus. Three, two, one. Jubilee, baby. All the old timers knew the rapture would happen in the year of Jubilee. And God is going to prove to the Jews through Sean and others that the rapture was Jubilee and they get their, get their calendar straight. Hello? I love it. So he says the ELS, that's the that's how many skips are between each letter in the code. That means that God's doing this. Nobody, nobody could have ever found this on their own looking through the old Hebrew text and just counting out numbers. What number do you start with? And God said, I got one for you. How about 32150? Amen. So that's the skips here. ELS is 32150. It contains the day she died, which was March 21st. The center part of the code forms a number four made up of her name, Levite Linda Mitchell, and the mother, her life, and she's the mother of Sean, her life, and Jehovah, yod heh vav -Heh, which flows up from a daughter of Levi. Jehovah is joined three times around her name along with Yeshua, which is Jesus, the salvation of Yah. If you flip the table upside down, the term a daughter of Levi, her life and the gift is her light form a 17 or a 71 in reverse. God's giving us pictures, guys. And when we get to heaven and see this, it's going to be greater than a 3D picture. It's going to be an awesome infinity picture. It's going to blow our minds. It'll come to life, I think. You know, people always talk about, oh, th this, the, the life that we're living is a simulated computer thing, da 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 That's the, Satan's put that in their heart. This is the real life. This is where you make your decisions. And when we go to heaven and see this Bible code in the Bible room come to life, it's going to blow our minds greater than any simulation. It'll be the real deal, and we'll have seats right there watching it, man. I, over and over, bring it. And guys, remember... This Bible code, when you read the Bible, it's from Moses until John, the apostle on the Isle of Patmos. Boom. You've got that time frame in there. 1,500 years. Okay? 40 authors, 1,500 years. Now the Bible code makes it expanse all 6,000 years with all the believers, with your story in there, how you overcame. That's going to be in there. That'll be the story we see. That's why God grabs a book of remembrance every time people talk about him and get thrilled with him and are excited about him. Because that's going in his code. It's already there. It's already there. But that book is a second ledger system. God loves that second ledger system. That's why he has books and the books were open. Not just the 66, but the other ones. The Book of Tears, the Book of Life, the Lamb's Book of Life, the Book of Sorrows, the Book of remembrance. You're in the Bible codes, folks. And you'll be in the Bible room. So Jehovah joins three times around her name along with Jesus, Yeshua. If you flip the table upside down, you'll see the terms a daughter of Levi, her life, and the gift is her light. It forms a 17 or a 71 in reverse. Finally, the term Levite begins at 1 Chronicles eleven fifteen. what? Which contains the chapter verse number of the actual day she died on the calibrated Hebrew calendar, the 15th day of the 11th month. Now, guys, God is this exacting. Do you guys remember him telling you that I've got every one of your hairs cataloged? Remember that? I know the number of your hairs, and he, he counts less and less with me every day. My, my, my count doesn't bother him a bit. But he says he's got them all cataloged. Why? Because he catalogs everything. He's got the exact numbers, the exact time, the exact dates, the timestamps. Numbers are everything to him because they don't lie. And here we have First Chronicles, you know, 11, 15. Yeah, I hate Chronicles. How boring is that? He begat, she begat, blah. What? Some of the greatest information in the Bible codes is found in Chronicles. Over and over and over again. And here is an awesome thing concerning the sister of ours in Christ Jesus who's a representation 
like the prophet Ezekiel and all the other prophets, show and tell, their lives telling a story. Guys, remember Amos? You guys, most of us here on this Bible study, we know who Amos is. But nobody knew who Amos was in Samaria. Because he was just a farmer and a picker of sycamore fruit. He was, he was a nobody. He was not recognized by anybody until God said, Hey, buddy, why don't you set your sycamore basket down there? I've got a job for you. And then he says, I was neither a prophet nor the son of a prophet. I was a picker of sycamore fruit and uh, a shepherd of sheep. And God called me. But I've got his word. And when God gives you a word, it doesn't matter who you are, what your background is, what color you are, what station in life you came from. It doesn't matter when God gives you his word. You preach his word with boldness like God himself is saying it. And you speak it in the authority of God. We are in his stead we are in as his ambassadors, his representatives, and you ought to represent him properly. Not with this March Madness crap and bunny rabbits. Hello? Is anybody copying there? Pay-per-view? Are you, are you copying there? So those numbers are awesome. The term Levite begins in 1 Chronicles 11.15, which contains the chapter verse numbers of the actual day she died on the calibrated Hebrew calendar, the 15th day of the 11th month, March 21st, 2023. This code is an incredible witness of God's holy seal on her life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Dim says, if the Bible code was given to Sean by God to give to us for the later days, I hope he gives us the date when God shows up, don't get OCD on this. Don't get OCD on this. He will know the day, and if the Lord if the Lord reveals it to him, he'll let us know. Okay, we're going to be ready, and we know that it's the Pentecost rapture. All right, we know when he rose in in the thirty uh, A.D. and we know what his resurrection day is now. We know what the fifty day count is now, July nine. Count on that. Count on July nine. Okay. Count on April 15th through July 9th right now. That is a greater window than anybody else on planet Earth has. They're all wrong. They think this is Easter week. And they have videos, 30-minute videos, telling us all about how wrong they are. Because they haven't become part of those who have become the calibrated ones on God's calibrated calendar that we find in the Bible codes. Enoch knew the day he was going to be raptured, and Elijah knew the day he was going to be raptured. Uh, we're not children of darkness, the children of light, so I think we may know the day before it happens. I am studying the codes. Amen. I think it's right there, Dim. I think it's right there, bro. And uh, God will show us. God will show us. You study those codes, and God will give you some revelation within those codes. It might be some of those numbers we're talking about, bro. Amen. God is he's, he's the God of revelation. He reveals, he reveals, he reveals. And we are not the children of darkness. Like you said, we are the children of light. The children of darkness will not know. The children of light will. And so praise God. Good word, man. And I say that, I wasn't saying that to you. I was saying that to everybody else who wants to know. Uh, is, am, I, am I in the codes? They'll say, hey, tr look for me. And it's like, this guy has got some ministry to do. We ain't got time to look for you. Okay. Just make sure you're saved. Make sure you're saved. And we'll go from there. Amen. Uh, I, I have to answer the way I do for others who ask that question who aren't tuned in like we are, Dim. So I wasn't saying that to you personally. I was saying that in general to everybody else who wants to go OCD on it. Tell me a date. Tell me a date. Amen, brother. I appreciate your faithful service and your faithful witness to the Lord and being part of our family. I love that. Uh, okay. Getting back here to our Bible code. It says, the word, this is Psalm 119, 105. The word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. That goes right through here, man. Amen. Aren't you thankful for the plain text scriptures that go through our Bible codes? The Levite, Linda Mitchell, is the mother of Sean, Moses. Her life is a daughter of Levi. Dude. The gift is her light. yod heh vav -Hey, Jesus, Yeshua. Jerusalem belongs to the saints of the Most High. What a beautiful, beautiful meal of manna that is. And the other verse that goes through there is Exodus 2, 1 to 2. And there went a man from the house of Levi and took to wife a daughter of Levi, just like Sean's parents. 
His father's a Levite and his mother's a Levite. Hallelujah. And this mother and father had Moses and Aaron and Miriam. And God mentions all three of those, how important they were to him in leading the children of Israel out of Egypt into and unto the promised land. Amen. And there went a man in the house of Levi and took to wife a, a daughter of Levi, and the woman conceived and bare a son, Moses, drawn out, amen, chosen out of the whole crowd. God chose him. And then along comes Pharaoh's daughter and draws him out of the water, and she calls him Moses, drawn out, chosen. All right. And this is the Lord's doing. It's a marvelous thing. This is Psalm 118, 23. This is the Lord's doing. It is a marvelous, it is marvelous in our eyes. This is Malachi 3.16, of the verse we were just talking about. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another about the Lord. And the Lord hearkened, and he heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. Hallelujah. That's you, that's me, that's us. Praise God, man. Hallelujah. Let's let's read. That translation one more time, and then we'll go into another code. The Levite, Linda Mitchell, is the mother of Sean, Moses. Her life is a daughter of Levi. The gift is her light. Jehovah, Jesus. Jerusalem belongs to the saints of the Most High. They're the tribulation saints. Jerusalem doesn't belong to us, the church. The new Jerusalem belongs to us, the church. We get new Jerusalem. We, we are the heavenly kingdom. The Jews are the earthly kingdom, and they get Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen, guys. All right. Let's look at some other codes. Boom. Where do we start? Where do we leave off last night? I'm trying to get, get a couple of them in order you know, from way back from seven years ago. And just cover them because that gives us a good diversity, a good variety of codes coming at us, man. I love that. All right. So we saw the jigsaw puzzle last night. That was awesome. And we saw the blameless one who is Yeshua. So the one we'll look at tonight is lightning is Barack Obama and in him is judgment. And there's not much of a humongous terms and codes there, but this is a huge code. It's at a skip of 228,723, okay? In God's code is design and knowledge. This ain't willy-nilly, and you can find this in any other book. That's what all these people who poo-poo the code say, oh, you can find codes anywhere. You can make a code say whatever you want. Well, you can because you don't have the spirit of living God in you, and you've not been called to bring out God's word. As Moses' son has been called. You know, a Levite with a Levite producing a Levite. Moses. Bringing us the wonderful light of Jesus and the Father, Jehovah. Amen. Uh, Dim says, hey, not too concerned about the date, as I believe the longer God takes to come, the more people may be saved. and hear the word from people uh, like you. Uh, as he had come anytime sooner, I would not have met your channel and seen God. Yeah, yeah, Sean and everybody. God does all this in his time. Amen. And we're going to know the date. I really believe that, buddy. And and like I said, I, I was I was saying that for all the others who don't have a heart for God, who they, they want microwave answers. Give it to me now. And they won't study. They won't research. They're not like I'm encouraging all of us to be. Okay. They want to watch the game tonight and have the answer. They want to go to church tomorrow on the day we inspect Jesus in their, in their thinking that that's the day, the Palm Sunday, and they're not even going to celebrate Palm Sunday properly because God will have been left out. You guys know they celebrate Palm Sunday in heaven. You'll see that in the book of Revelation. You'll, you'll see the uh, Feast of Tabernacles when they're, they all have palms in their hands. The Feast of Tabernacles is when they build little sukkahs, little tents, little huts, from the palms they gathered on Palm Sunday. And now they have dried out, become thatch, and they can build little huts with them. In heaven, they celebrate the Feast of the Lord. 
In celebrate uh, in heaven, they celebrate it properly. They do it right according to scriptures. Today, the people in churches don't do anything according to scriptures. They don't even serve the living God. Praise God, guys. I love y'all. I'm, I'm glad we're here, and the Lord's about to come get us. April, you be looking. April 15. Uh, and we already know, we already know that the, all the governments of the world, the United Nations, is coming after every person on the planet with this digital money. They're going to control them at every level. Control them at the street corners with the cameras. Control them everywhere with the RFID chips, which will soon be an implanted chip. Those RFID chips are dangerous in your credit cards and your debit cards. Dangerous, man. And they're already controlling us. And so it's just step by step, a little python squeeze by a little python squeeze until you're dead and choked out. And God says, how about if I just rapture you, man? How about that? Amen. So lightning is Barack Obama. In him is judgment. In God's code, in God's code, in God's code, in God's code, in God's code. What does it say? There's design and knowledge. Do you believe yet? You better believe, and you better believe with force. You better believe with vigor. You better believe with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. You better believe. You better believe. You better believe. Lightning is Barack Obama, and in him is judgment. In God's code, design and knowledge. What does Luke 18, 10 say? That means this is coming from the Prashita. Okay? And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. How about that? Barack Obama is lightning. Lightning is Barack. Amen. Second Corinthians 2.11 Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Praise God we're not. Praise God for the Bible codes that keeps us from being ignorant of Satan's devices. The plain text will do that. And the rest of the church is ignorant of Satan's devices. They have no idea that all this strange weather is a warning from God. They just think it's strange weather. Why? We've never had tornadoes before. What's that about? Give me the remote. Why? We've never had weather like this and destruction and everything. Honey, get on your leotards. We're going to dance class. Stupid stuff. Don't even know the judgment of God is here. We should be praying and humble on our faces before the living God, the Lord. Praying not for us. We're, we're not, oh, Lord, help me to endure to the end. He's already endured to the end for us. We're saved, we're sanctified, and we're going to be glorified. We're praying for the lost left behind folks. We're praying for the stupid Christians who aren't Christians. We're praying for all these people who attend churches, the pastors who are so dumb and they are wicked wolves. We're praying for the saved ones who are lazy and bums and won't even do their job because they're there for the money. They're hirelings and not true shepherds. God's sick of it, man. We're praying for them. And get busy praying for them, man. Lest Satan should get a hold of them, and Satan's got a hold of them. They are, they are so ignorant of his devices, his schemes. But praise God, you and I, the Bible reader, the Bible code reader, we're not ignorant of his devices. We know that he's coming with judgment. We know who his people are. We know that the Pope is faking his sickness right now. We know that the Pope is the second beast and Barack Obama is the first beast, the Antichrist beast, in whom Satan will dwell the last three and a half years of the tribulation. We know these things. We know them not just, oh, generally, and maybe we're guessing. We know specifically because it's God's code. And it has great design and knowledge, and he has let us know his knowledge in here. Amen? This is the word of God. All right, let's look at the next one. That was a powerful little code, wasn't it? Stellarium. Stellarium. Stellarium is a uh, an app you put on your phone or uh, what, do you, what do you call it? You put on your computer. It's not an app on your computer, whatever it is. Uh, a program, computer program, you download Stellarium.com, I think. You go there and you get it, and then it'll tell you where the stars are presently. You can look back a day. You can look forward a day. You can look back 
5,000 years and look forward 5,000 years. It's software. Fondo says it's software. You can download the Stellarium software, and that's the one I suggest you get because God has put his approval on it. Okay? Stellarium. Let's see what it says here. The stars in the high place. Isaiah 45, 12. Hmm. Isaiah is the 23rd book. You guys remember when Stellarium got really popular and what we were using it for? For the Revelation 12 sign that happened on the 23rd on the calendar of, of Gregory, the Pope, 923 is when it happened. And so Isaiah is the 23rd book, 45 is Sean, and 12. When is the full moon of April? That begins the 12th month, and you better start looking up then. Why do we say that? Because the 12th month is the month Adar. And it was the 13th day of that month when God gave the okay with the dice for all the Jews to be killed. So this is very serious to us. We start looking right now, and that 12 is very important years later. This was seven years ago, August 30th, will be seven years that we received this manna from heaven, and it's still feeding us. That's the cool part about these Bible codes. They'll still feed you, and and one that's been sitting there for almost seven years, you can go back and it will enlighten you and open your eyes to something you've been questioning seven years later. And you go back to the original and go, oh, there it was the whole time. And right now, even in this uh, Bible passage, 23, Isaiah is the 23rd book. And boy, he's very, you need to know Isaiah, okay? 23 is a very powerful number because, you know, you're living in it. You might, you're going to be raptured in it. On the Gregorian calendar, you will be raptured in 2023. On God's calendar, is it 22 or 23? Because 23 doesn't start till 5 5, Cinco de Mayo. Okay? It's exciting. It's very exciting. Be looking up. Vano says, man, April's full moon is called the pink moon. It's going to occur in the eastern U.S. on April 6th at 1, 2, 3, 4 p.m. Are y'all getting all this? What did you say about August 30th? That's when this Bible code was delivered to us in 2016. That's when we got this Bible code on Stellarium because we were looking for the Revelation 12 sign in 2017, a year and one month later, okay? Which was September 23rd, 2017. And God gave us this code one year and one month earlier than that. Praise God. Praise God. Alicia says, man, that's awesome. That's my birthday. Amen. And so that's when we received this manna from heaven about Stellarium. And why is this code so important? Because it concerns the stars. And what is the stars in Genesis 1.14? God gave them to us. And the very first thing he says about sun, moon, and stars is as signals. Signs of what I'm up to. That's the first purpose he gave us them, and that's why they're never, ever, ever going to go missing. He told us that what he got rolling in the beginning will continue forever, and he made the promise to the Jews. He said, as long as those stars are in their courses and following their design is how long I'll love you and how long my covenant will last with you. So Stellarium is pretty important because you can go forward thousands of years and find out what Jesus is up to. Because of his storybook in the sky, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Every day, day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language on earth where the stars won't speak to you, and you can understand it. That's why God gave them to us. So everybody around the world, even before the Bible was written, could know what they were saying. What we have lost is the beautiful voice, what they're saying. And God's bringing it back, and Sean will be teaching others. How awesome it is. He calls all the stars by name. Amen. Praise God. George says, one way this verse could have been said by Jesus in Hebrew in order to get translated this way by Luke is, I saw Satan fall like lightning from the heights. Ra Satan nafal ahar barak Obama. That's how kind of, I can't say it. 
but that's kind of the speech he would have said. And those words that uh, George put on there is what Jesus was saying. I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven, from the heights. And where is it Satan wants to be? The heights. Uh, Isaiah 14, the 23rd book. I, guys, Isaiah is so vital to your life right now. Will you please believe that? And read it in big chunks and read it over and over and become so familiar with Isaiah. Okay? He was the father-in-law of King Hezekiah. Good stuff there. Hey Amen. Thanks, George. Great word. God says in Isaiah 45, 12, I have made the earth and created man upon it. Even my hands have stretched out the heavens and all their host have I commanded. God has put them all in their orbits. All the host of heaven he has put in their orbit to tell us a story. And Stellarium is how we can find out his story now. Amen. This software you can download. And here's the cool part. The, the code says Stellarium, and it forms a cross, and it says, and he called the name. God put it in the heart of the inventors of this software to call it Stellarium because it's stellar. It is stellar, dude. It's of the stars. And he called the name Stellarium. You will see the sun, the moon, and the stars, and all the host of heaven with this thing. And God wants us to. It's his other Bible, guys. And God says, Stellarium is sufficient to be my Bible, to speak my word, to show my signs and wonders in the heavens. And the dates will be pretty accurate. You ought to see the stuff Sean found today looking at Stellarium and the like. Concerning, he has found a pair of asteroids that are pretty close together called Sean Mitchell. And where they're located, he found one called Linda. And where they are located is incredible. And where Linda was located the day she went on to be with Jesus, Stellarium showed him all of that. And it can show you too. All you got to do is go on and look for an asteroid Linda and it'll show you where she was on this date that we saw earlier that God already knew what day she was going to go to heaven on the calibrated calendar. Hallelujah. Aaron says, if you know you're saved, without a doubt, you are written in the book of life. We who are saved were written in the book when the book was written. Jesus is the word made flesh equals the Bible is alive. The book of life is the same as the Bible. It is the Bible. Amen, bro. That is also the blueprint made before everything. It's all there. Do you believe? Do you believe that God's powerful enough to do that? Just with his word, it's his word, it's his heart. Do you think he can preserve it that long? I do. Do you think he can give us some software called Stellarium that lets us know where the stars were on the day that he was born and the day that he died? And that's how one of the many triangulation points, multiple points, we know what day he died on. Because remember, the new moon is bright, full moon. And the day he died, there was no moon. And Stellarium helps us with that. And we know what day he died on. The Bible code tells us the exact date. Stellarium tells us the exact date. Because the heavens declare the glory of God, the sun, moon, and stars are God's word. He had them here before he had us here. So as soon as Adam opened his eyes, he could know the word of God. See, Jesus came walking with him, the physical Old Testament version of Jesus, Christophany. Jesus came walking with him in the cool of the, of the day. And then they had their walk and talk, and Jesus was on to be where he was going. And Adam could look up and still hear him talking. Because the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech. They're telling God's story. And night unto night is teaching knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Amen? Amen. And so God tells us, man, you'll be able to see the sun, moon, and stars in all the heavens there. Stellarium. And he called the name. Hey, hey, God, what is the best software to, you know, look up your sun, moon, and stars? Stellarium. 
Let's look at the next one. This next code came from August 30th as well. So both of these Stellarium ones came on August 30th, 2016. And I, I see my comment there from six years ago, it's almost seven. It says, this is great confirmation. I've often wondered just how reliable the program really is. Well, it's sufficient. Praise the Lord, because God says right here, Stellarium is sufficient. My buddy Darren and I had made a couple videos about Stellarium, about the Revelation 12 sign on September 23rd, 2017. We had made it out of faith believing, and then this just solidified our faith. And it was a blessing to me when these codes came out and said, Stellarium is right. Stellarium is sufficient. Stellarium will work with the past that you can't see any longer. Aren't you thankful for that? Your eyeballs will work for now, but Stellarium will work for the past, and it will also work for the future. Aren't you thankful for that, man? So that's what we're looking at. Stellarium is sufficient. The usage of the stars in it, Psalm 119, 111, the thy testimonies have I taken as the heritage forever. The future, will it show the future? God says, yep. What about the past? Yep. God's showing us where every star is. And you could go on Stellarium, use that software, and you could say, I want to see where Earth was on that day from Jupiter. So you could see from Jupiter's vantage where Earth was on the day Jesus Christ was crucified. <laughs> is that awesome? And any other planet from the moon. Where was the moon on that day? Where was the sun? Where was Jupiter on that day from, you could say, any spot on Earth from Jerusalem? It's awesome. God has given us a wonderful program here. And we get to see the future stars that haven't made it yet, but because he put them on their course and design, we know where, exactly where they're going to be. Aren't you thankful for that? And we know where they were in the past. Oh, yes, his research is here. Your codes, your precepts, the code is from God. And they come by way of your computer. The software, there it is, Vondo. The word software is right there. Amen in this one. I should have heard him got, got to this code first and I'd have known the name. But God put it here because that's what it's called. It's the software. Stellarium is the software of God and it's sufficient. And it will show the past. Again, it's right there. It'll show the light above and the stars of the heavens. I love it. Praise the Lord. And it really verified in my heart that it was sufficient because we had been using it to look for the day of the death, burial, and resurrection, to look for certain feast, you know? And God said, yeah, it's sufficient. It'll work, man. We said, praise the Lord. All right, let's look at another one. This is Obama's name is 666. God told us that on September 6th, 2016. That's when this manna dropped. Now remember, Sean has codes. He already knows stuff in it. He sets them down until the Lord tells him it's time to drop that manna. Okay? So this was out there a little longer than the day he published it for us. Okay? And we had it published on September 6, 2016. And it says, Obama's name is 666. He is the devil. He's the Antichrist, guys. God told us that seven years ago. Will you believe yet? Are you still going to say it's Putin and somebody else? Oh, it can't be him. It's the Assyrian. Uh, we have over 100 published codes of manna where God tells us he's the Assyrian. Barack Obama's the Assyrian. He's the Antichrist. He's the son of perdition. He's the man of sin over and over. He's Gog. That's why we know the war of Gog is at the end of the tribulation. Guys, will you quit? preaching false doctrine and just get with the Bible codes in this and calibrate your heart and life and your truth in God's truth. The Bible codes are God's word in his dialect. Why don't you learn to speak his lingo, man? And all you got to do is read the English by a man who's learned to speak his English or, or his lingo. It's Aramaic in the New Testament and Hebrew in the Old Testament. And Sean produces these codes as they are. Uh, let's see here, man. What Bible verse is it? Okay, this is an Old Testament code. This Obama's name, the Antichrist, his name is found in the Old Testament, Leviticus 19, 28. What does it say? Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. This is concerning thousands of years later 
the mark of the beast. Don't you dare get this. Don't you dare get this marker. It's a genetic marker rendering you unable to be saved because Jesus only died for humans made in Adam's image, Noah's image. And this marker is a genetic marker and it's going to change your DNA. God says, don't take it. And he told us that back in Leviticus, man. Back in Leviticus, God reveals all to his saints through the codes. Obama's name is 666. This is Sean talking, his commentary. That is the number of his name. The axis is Obama's name is 666. We read Leviticus 19.28. Satan, whom with him is a son. The son of perdition. When Satan enters him, after he's been assassinated, Satan enters him, and at that moment, he becomes the son of perdition. Up until then, he was the man of sin. And we're told back here in this Bible code seven years ago that Satan, whom with him, is a son. When Satan joins him, he's the son of the devil. He's a liar, and concerning Israel, he lies and lies, and he'll shake their hand and make an agreement, and then we're told he's a treacherous dealer, has dealt treacherously, and he's going to break the promise that he made to them. Also, it's treachery that he takes the right hand and puts this mark in it. The hand he shook. Oh, I love you guys. Right hand of fellowship. Now you're going to get my mark and worship me or I'll kill you. I'll cut your heads off. Treachery, betrayal, lies. Right-handed lies from a left-handed man. Hello? He lies concerning Israel. What is this mark? 666 to give to the right hand. Revelation 13, 6 to 17 says, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or on their foreheads, that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. This does not happen until midpoint of the tribulation. The tribulation, once it starts, is a seven-year period, the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, And that time of Jacob's trouble kicks in that last three and a half years when Satan enters Barack Obama and he wants to kill everybody. He wants to destroy. One third of the Jews, the, the population now, one third of what the population is right now will escape and God will have them in hiding for the last three and a half years, the last half of the tribulation. And when people talk about this thing <laughs> is the mark of the beast, they don't know what they're talking about. The Bible code told us that this thing is a precursor to the mark of the beast. It is not the mark of the beast. He told us what the mark of the beast is, and we have many codes. Download that Bible code book. And Sean's going to wait a little while before he um, updates it because the Lord's given him more knowledge and a couple more codes that he wants to add. And today's a special day about his mother's code. And he, just before I got on here, he was sharing with me a couple more that he found about his mom. Incredible. The daughter of Moses. Amen. And he's the son of Moses. Amen. God's given us Moses to give us the first five books and give us Sean to write us the last seven thunders. When God talks about the seven thunders and John was ready to write them down and God says, no, that's not for you. That's for Sean. And Sean has given us six of those thunders. That's his book. And the seventh one will be completed in the tribulation you better come to know those thunders. Everybody, all these preachers and scholastics and college and seminary, I wonder what those thunders are. And they, you'll read about them, what they think they are. And they're so dumb when the Bible told us that this book is the seven thunders. Plain. You and I get to see it in English. He's transcribed it for us. Don't you love it? Are you going to believe it? You better believe it. You better believe God, his word. In the heavens, his word in the plain text, and his word in the Bible code. Believe, believe, believe. I encourage you to believe. And yeah, Bono mentions subcutaneous chip. We have a Bible code on that. God tells us what the mark of the beast is. It's an implant. It goes under the skin. Just like they're doing in tattoo parlors. Right? You got your tattoos and then you have your implants. Body sculpture. And this is all part of that. They're getting us ready for it. They're making it an everyday thing. Used to was, when I was a little kid, tattoos were taboo. It was like, oh my, ooh, he come from the wrong side of the tracks. He, he was in the wrong part of the Navy. 
Oh, man. And then all of a sudden, we got these tattoo shows coming up. Cat and all the rest of them. Oh, it's great. It's great. They popularized it. made it all great. And so now everybody, it's not a problem to get this Mark of the Beast. Uh, unless you've listened to the Lord speak, and then it's a huge problem. Don't get this Mark of the Beast. And the angel pre crying out the woes, don't you dare get this Mark of the Beast. You won't be saved. And so that's what we have. And it's Obama, guys. It's Obama. Will you get that and just accept it from the Lord? He is the Antichrist. And right now he's in Australia being all quiet. And the people of Australia didn't know he was coming. I've listened to a couple of the videos of the people. It's like, dude, we found out he's here. We didn't know he was coming. They kept that hush, hush. And Vano says he saw it somewhere. And that's probably among our group of people who don't trust the media and who knows they're liars and who study it and follow it. There are some groups who follow that guy and know his itinerary and know what he's up to. And then they'll share it with us, man, because they know who he is. I'm encouraging you to know who he is and believe it from the Lord. Okay. He lies. He, li he lies right now. He hadn't told the truth yet. He can't. As, as Jesus is incapable of telling a lie, God, that, that's one of his, when you're in seminary and you're studying theology and Christology, he is a God that cannot lie. He's impeccable. He's perfect without lying, without changing the story. Obama can't tell the truth. Everything's a lie. He's pretending to be our friends and Russia's enemy, and he's Russia's buddy going to blow America up, destroy us. We have Bible codes all on that. The day of the rapture, America goes missing. It's going to happen in less than an hour. It's going to happen at night, and when people wake up in the morning, it'll be missing. There'll be zero New York City, zero coastlines. And a lot of the interior will be hit with firepower, nukes. All right, let's look at another one. Boom. This one is from the date September 10th, 2016. And it's also about Stellarium, and he's included a picture. Sean has a picture of the Revelation 12 sign. And we had known about it forever, and it is a sign that when the... Uh, all the planets and their rotations turn and the sun, moon, and stars turn. And when we're given that description, Revelation 12, it's Virgo. Revelation 12. And there was a wonder in heaven. A woman, she was clothed in the sun. One month out of the year, Virgo is clothed in the sun. That's when the sun rises at Virgo. So we always knew it was that time of year. The autumn. Okay. And uh, she would have a crown on her head. 12 stars. Well, she always has nine stars there. So three wandering planets came in. Mars, Mercury, and whatever it was. I can't remember what came in. And then she, she was great with child. Jupiter had been in her womb for nine months, the gestation period. And before all that, a comet went into her womb and it looked like sperm as it was, it was flying in. You can see it all on Stellarium. Stellarium paints the picture, guys, the whole thing. The comet goes into her womb and leaves and then Jupiter arrives in her womb and retrogrades from Earth's vantage and looks like it never leaves her womb for the space of a human gestation. And then it says she was waiting to give birth to the man-child. And on this date, September 23rd and September 24th, it was all there. The 12 stars above her head, uh, Jupiter leaving her womb. And there it was, the Revelation 12 sign. God saying, I'm about to rapture you. That was in 2000, what we call 17. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. That's probably when the trib will start. Their seven-year starting gun. Remember the seven years of warning with Joseph. Remember that? God's all about warning. He's all about getting my preachers out there in the watchtowers, hollering out, screaming. And he gave us this big, humongous sign in the heavens on September 23rd, 2017. And Sean writes about it on September 10th, 2016, a whole year and a couple weeks earlier. Because that's how Bible prophecy works. And we already had the photograph of it before it ever happened because of Stellarium. Stellarium is sufficient to God. God gave the name for it. Aren't you thankful for this software? And he called it software. Thanks, Vondo. Stellarium. The ELS is 191,606. So every skip is that exact 
perfect equidistant letter skipping between it all. That's what makes a code a code. It's got to be perfect all the way through. And these are perfect all the way through. Revelation 12, 1 and 2. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed in the sun, the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. And she being great with child, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. God gave us that in the book of Revelation. And you guys know that John was there. God brought John on the Isle of Patmos to September 23rd, 2017. And he saw it. I saw this wonder. The prophets are time travelers. Re remember Zechariah seeing the men's eyes melt in their sockets and their tongues melting in their mouth while they were standing on their feet, getting nuked. God brings them to that time and they see it live. They're watching it happen. It's not some ether thing. God brings his prophets forward in time. And he did that with Sean with Stellarium. And we got these pictures. There were other people doing it too. But Sean included it here with a Bible code times three or four or five about Stellarium. He says, this is Sean's commentary. I have a couple more tables showing the astronomy software Stellarium. There it is again. Wow. Stellarium pointing to the Revelation 12 discovery. I have also discovered many hidden messages about Nibiru. Nibiru is God's judgment system. The seven-headed dragon, okay? Which is the red dragon of Revelation 12. And in this code, it includes Stellarium, blessed be those you he's created from the Father. It's in me as the stars. And then he mentions right here in this code, it says Virgo, Jesus, Jehovah, creator, truth. God designed it from the beginning. The word has been completed in heaven before he ever got it to men. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Men didn't just write it one day willy-nilly. If I were God, here's what I'd write. Or God said, oh, I got to get those guys something. What am I going to tell Jeremiah? Hmm, he didn't do that. It was already in heaven, and he got it to Jeremiah at the pace he needed him to get it over his tenure of ministry. And even when they burned his scroll, cut it up with a pen knife and threw it in the fire, he just rewrote it in the timing of God, and added some things to it. And so here we have it, Stellarium. Okay, guys, I love you. By God's grace, we'll see you tomorrow. And the ELS of this thing, let's look at those numbers. 1 plus 9 is 10, plus 1 is 11, plus 6 is 17. That's nice. And then there's a 0. So we got a 17 all by itself over there. Victory. Okay? And the 17th, on the Julian calendars when Jesus died. Big number for us. Then there's a zero and a six. 23. The ELS totals 23 on the day he's describing September 23. Because the numbers do not lie, folks. 17 and 23 right there. I love you. By God's grace, we'll see you tomorrow night. Stay away from paganism. If your church is going to involve themselves with bunny rabbits and eggs, you stay away to honor your God, to fear your Lord always and Him alone. Don't you dare be part of that, man. You're only going to hurt yourself. You're a pagan. You are Paganism negates Jesus in any worship service. That's why Catholics are all going to hell, even with the statue of what they refer to as Jesus, because they are pagan. Pagans, they bring paganism in with their Jesus, and that negates Jesus because he will have no other gods in paganism before him. You shall worship God, and him alone shall you serve. And you Protestants need to hear me saying what I'm saying. And don't you dare be part of it. Don't you dare X out Jesus like Xmas does. Don't X him out. I love you. By God's grace, we'll see you tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, we'll see you.